What's up guys? Today we're going to go over all of the properties of redstone dust, redstone torches, redstone repeaters, and redstone blocks to hopefully help you build your own redstone circuits. Alright, so starting with redstone dust, redstone dust carries redstone signals. The signal strength of the redstone dust uh, is a maximum at 15, and then it goes down by 1 every block that it goes away from the source. So we have 15, 14, 13, 12, all the way down to 0, which is completely off. Redstone dust powers any opaque block that it's on top of. So in this case, the gold blocks are being powered. Uh, and then in turn, the gold blocks power the redstone lamps here. The dust also powers any block that's facing into. So in this case, this lamp right here, the dust is powering because it's facing into it. Whereas these two blocks are not getting powered because the dust isn't facing into it. This also goes for any components that force the dust to go into it, such as repeaters and comparators. Um, so this rule still applies, it's just these guys force the dust to go into it, which is why we can do it on the side, rather than doing it at the end like that. Redstone dust can travel up and down one block at a time, so it can go up the staircase and down the staircase. It can't do any more blocks than that, so it can't go up two, so this isn't connected, uh, and it can't go down two, this isn't connected either. It also can't go up one block if there's an opaque block cutting off the corner right th like this. So this is not connected to this guy because it's getting blocked off by this opaque block. However, with transparent blocks, it can actually go through the corners, but it can only go up. So this goes all the way up, whereas if we break that and do this, it won't go down for some reason. And this goes for any transparent block. So we can also do it with glowstone because for some reason glowstone's transparent. And it, again, has the same properties. So you can't go down, but you can go up. Alright, so moving on to redstone torches, torches provide a power source of 15 and will power any block that it's adjacent to except for the block that it's on top of. So this lamp is not on because this block is not powered. This also goes for if it's on the side, so if we do this, this block is not powered, however it will still power all the blocks that it's around. Torches also have the unique property of inverting the signal that goes into the block that the torch is on top of. So right now that is the gold block. Um, the signal on the gold block is off, which means the torch will be on. If we turn it on, then this torch will be off. It doesn't matter how we power the gold block, so we could just easily go add a repeater into it and it will still do the same thing. However, be careful of doing something like this because you can actually short out your torch by turning it off and on too fast. Um, and what's happening here is that this torch powers this block, which then powers the redstone, which then inverts this block, which then inverts this, which inverts this, and then it just goes on and on and on until it turns off completely. Redstone torches also take one redstone tick in order to do this inversion. All right, so now on to the redstone repeater. The repeater will output a signal of off if the input's off, and it'll output on if the input is on. However, it'll output a signal strength of 15 if the input is any signal strength that isn't zero, which allows us to essentially distance extend like this, where redstone dust alone can't make it all the way to the end here because it's longer than 15 blocks. Whereas if we put a repeater in the middle, we can make it all the way to the end because this isn't a signal strength of 15, but this is a signal strength of 15, which then essentially re sets the distance that we can travel. Repeaters will strong power any block that they're facing into like this, which means that they've powered not only that block, but any block around it, including redstone dust. However, unlike redstone dust, repeaters do not power the block that they are immediately on top of like this, whereas if this is redstone dust, this is powered. Repeaters also allow you to adjust the delay that it takes for the inputs to go to the outputs. So there's a minimum of one redstone tick, which is the default, and then every time you right click it, it increases by one redstone tick up into four redstone ticks. So we can see here that these lamps turn on at different times with their respective delays. However, they also turns the pulse length to a minimum of whatever the delay is. So if the pulse length on the input is shorter than the delay, then the new pulse length will be whatever the delay is. So we can see that by doing a really fast delay here, the left one is on for longer, even though they start at the same time, because these all have a pulse length of one, whereas this has a pulse length of four. You can also lock repeaters into a certain state by putting another repeater sideways into the repeater that's gonna get locked. So if we turn this repeater on, we can see that it just acts normally. However, if we turn on the repeater on the side, it will lock it into the state that it's on. So we can now turn this off and it's locked into the state and it will remain locked until the side repeater turns off. Now on to redstone blocks. Redstone blocks are a movable block that is always powered. So we can move it into the middle of all these lamps and then all the lamps turn on. However, unlike a lot of other power sources, the redstone block doesn't power adjacent blocks. So you have to have your redstone components immediately next to the redstone block in order for them to be powered. 
All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. I hope you found something of value here. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.